Welcome back to Greece and welcome back to the new Vistrom 1050. This is the new DE version, which is all new for 2023. The Vistrom DE now has a 21 inch front wheel, upgraded longer travel suspension, revised geometry, longer swinging arm, TFT dash and a quick shifter and blipper. But the big question is, how does it ride? Join me for a ride around the Greek countryside and I will let you know. Chop seat, roll the intro. So we just had a bit of lunch. We've done the work on the, the non-DE version this morning, the road-based version. If I split the videos, I'll link it to the top here. This afternoon, we are riding the new, the all new DE, Dual Explorer, I believe it stands for. Differences are 21 inch front wheel, longer travel suspension, the whole geometry has been changed. I think it's got a 50 millimeter longer swinging arm as well. Um, so today we're gonna go out into the mountains, hopefully, as you saw in the other video, there was a lot of snow on the ground. So we don't know, I don't know what the conditions are going to be like up there. Probably quite challenging. And what I'm going to be really interested in is to see how that 21 inch front wheel and the geometry changes have affected how the bike rides on the road. Because the beauty of the standard version, I'll say that all the road version, the non-DE, is the beautiful ro road holding with a 19 inch front wheel. What's the 21 going to ride like? Look at that in front. Look at that mountain. That is where we're going, to the top of that. We're heading up to the top of that. This is going to be incredible. The new bike's got the lovely TFT, 5 inch TFT. One thing it doesn't have, well I'll find out, but it doesn't have the My Spin Suzuki integration. Remember the GSX-S GT has got that My Spin app and you can integrate with your navigation with your phone? I don't think it has that. And I don't know why. I don't know why they wouldn't have included it on the V-Strom. Yeah, strange. Also the bike has a new quick shifter and blipper system which works really rather well. I've actually got big hoofing off-road boots on, but the gear lever on the DE is slightly different to the on-road bike, and you've got a bit more clearance for off-road boots. So they've thought about that as well. Looks like we're standing up. This is a proper adventure. I think Richie had some air then. Because of the quick shifter blipper, there's also some tweaks to the gearbox to make it work better with that system. So, yeah, it's not just been bolted on a quick shifter. They've actually re-engineered the gearbox slightly to accommodate it as well. I think I've been here on my Greece tour trip. I'm sure we had lunch down here somewhere. Maybe that calf, something like that. Is that a calf? Yeah, I think that's no, a furniture shop. <laughs> The obvious comparisons now with this bike is, of course, the Africa Twin. Hey! And the, uh, the, it feels a bit like an Africa Twin now. It's got that sort of feel to it. I mean, they've made quite a lot of changes to this version. They haven't just bolted on a 21 up front. You know, there's geometry changes, there's rake changes. As I said, the swinging arm is also 50 millimeters longer to sort of keep the same feel from the bike with that bigger front wheel. And of course the suspension is also slightly longer travel, only by about, it's not a huge amount, you've got about another 10 centimetres of travel on the suspension on the, on the DE over the non-DE. One thing which is a little bit irritating, and it's the same on the old V-Strom, the, the foot pegs are right where you want to put your feet down. So you're always hitting your, you know, you've got to readjust where you want to put your feet. And if you're a little bit shorter, you know, you're losing a bit of height, you know, to touch the ground because you can't have your your, f your legs directly in line with your ass because the foot pegs are in the way. Bit of gravel, bit of gravel. Like I say, we haven't got any knobbly tyres on these, so, you know, it's not full on, 
full on nobble eyes. Hang on, I've got to adjust my camera now. I've just clipped it on something on the. Like I say, suspension travel is more than the road bike based bike, but uh, it's not huge amounts of suspension travel on this. But actually, suspension feels very nice. I know this isn't much, this is just a little gravel, but it's a little bit rutted and whatnot. Cross camber. Second gear is quite nice for this sort of speed. Got the ABS off at the rear. Still on at the front. Hey, let's get some wheelies. Oh, the rear brake's been nicely adjusted for off-road boots as well. We'll leave it in second. As I've said before, there was plenty of drive. One of the most impressive things about this engine for a V-twin is you've got drive right from idle. I mean, right from idle, I was going on it in second there. Just pulls. There's actually a bit of snow falling as well. Yeah, this is nice. I could get into this, you know. Oh, yeah. Get it dirty. I think just having a full TFT rather than that old LCD thing it used to have. It just makes the bike feel much more modern. It just gives the bike a whole much more modern look and appeal. You know, it's, um, I mean, it's very similar to the old XT, you know, especially in this colour. I mean, the styling hasn't changed, you know. But with this front end, I don't know, it's, it's got, a, it definitely looks better. What we do, we'll have a little walk around the bike in a minute when we stop. But it definitely looks better in this DE form, you know, it beefs the front of the bike up, it looks more aggressive, looks a bit small, the standard version, because, you know, of those, of that small front wheel that drops the whole front of the bike, and the suspension is longer travel on this as well, of course, so, you know, that does make a big difference, and it's got more of a presence on the road, this DE, I have to say, I think if I was going to get one, I love the standard, I love how the standard one handles, but this doesn't feel a million miles away if I'm absolutely honest this is very very good but the changes they've made to the geometry really have helped the fact that they've gone bigger on the front and I love the fact that it is a v-twin a 90 degree v-twin I love that I mean I don't mind a parallel twin don't get me wrong but a v-twin I don't know there's just something that seems a bit more proper about it isn't it I know they're a bit heavier and all of that stuff, but I do like a proper V-twin. Shows you how little uh, traction there is on the on the rubber to the tarmac. I went to a wheelie on that street. Spun up. And it spun, yeah. What are you doing wheelies for? Christ, you hooligan. So there she is, looking nice and dirty now after that bit of a few puddles we've been through. But as you can see straight away, look how much bigger. The bike looks and the standard, I say the standard version, keep calling it the standard version, the non-DE, the road version, it does give it much more presence. The front mud guard is also completely different. It offers more protection to the front fork tubes. You know, this is, this is much more beefed up, looks cooler as well. And crash bars also come as standard as it does the aluminium bash plate as well. But yeah, it looks absolutely great. And I really like as well, I love the yellow, but I really like this blue and white as well. That's the same blue of my K8 GSXR. It's that early GSXR blue and the white. Looks absolutely fantastic in that, but I love the yellow. I don't know what I'd choose. I think I'd go for the yellow. One bad point with the DE is as I mentioned, you know, you've not got any adjustable wind windscreen. We well, have, but you need to you need an Allen key to do it. But you know, it's I guess it's a smaller screen anyway. It's tinted as well, just slightly different. Pannier mounting a standard, LED lights all round as well. You know, a uh, preload adjuster here. So you've got manual preload adjuster here. So let's give it a little bit more of that. Fatty spec. USB here, 12 volt charger under the seat. Let's have a look at it. There we go, proper 12 volt power outlet there. One thing I do find, all this sort of manoeuvring and turning, I think it definitely feels more weighty because of the 21 you've definitely got a bit more weight higher up on the bike and slow speed is a bit more tricky than the road-based version you know it, it, it's unavoidable 
you know you get a taller bike the weight's higher it's going to feel a little bit more unstable when you're going very very slowly you know, under five miles an hour and maneuvering the bike now I think. The Richie's camera is going to be scraping on the ground there. Now watch your camera Richie, that's going to be touching down sir, as mine may be as well. Oh, I'm really impressed actually with how this handles with that, with that 21. Yeah it's a bit heavier, it's not as flickable as the 19, as the, uh, the road based version, the non-DE, but I tell you, I'm sure it could be a little bit better than some of the competition, you know. And it's not all set big and wallowy, you know. It's, it's again, Suzuki know how to set suspension up. They've absolutely nailed it on this. This feels lovely on the road. Absolutely beautiful. It's not all soft and wallowy, you know. I think it is set to be road focused, even though this is the off-road, you know, the dual sport, but the dual explorer it is still set to give you good road performance because that is still where you're going to be on it 80% of the time. I'm having that Richie this time. Up his chuff. You're not getting away this time Rich. <laughs> Let's keep the tyres dry if possible. I actually feel a little bit more confident on this bike. I'm really, really surprised to say that, but in the corners, in this, you know, this uh, tarmac, which is a bit wet, a bit sketchy, I'm actually feeling more confident on this than I did on the road based bike. Whether that's just in my head, because I've been riding in these conditions for longer and I'm more used to it, but I definitely feel more confident on this one. Maybe it's that additional, you know, maybe that's the additional wheelbase it's 50 millimeters longer this bike maybe that's why it feels a little bit more stable a little bit more i say forgiving but just inspiring a little bit more confidence because of the longer wheelbase i don't know what's going on here just stop in the middle of the road for a chat camera rich <laughs> <laughs> nearly down the side of his car. I mean the V-Strom used to be, you know, the sensible choice. It was a bloody good bike. The old V-Strom 1050 was a bloody good bike, but it was, it was, it was no frills, you know. It was basic, it was no frills, but it was a bloody good bike. Now they've added some frills to it. You know, it's got the add-ons, it's got the TFT, it's got the quick shifter blipper, it's got the full access IMU, it's got the 21 inch front wheel, which some people would have been missing, you know. And now it is just a bloody good, capable bike. Okay, the, the, the fit and finish may not be up there with the best in the class, but that's why this bike is only 14, with all the toys. Look at that, that is incredible. Kind of snow top mountains over there as well. On the blipper, down to first. That gearing change as well is really good. Makes it much more punchy in the lower gears. Sort of driving out of these corners. Come on, Richie. Come on, Richie. Stop chucking stuff at me. <laughs> oh dear. I've got a big yellow, <laughs> big yellow bike up his bottom. When you go on the front, I'm using a lot of rear through here, but when you do go on the front, it doesn't unsettle the bike too much. Surprising amount. You know, it doesn't die. I know it's got no sort of anti-dive or electronic suspension on this, so I guess that's some of the frills it's missing from its really expensive counterparts. But even still, there's minimal dive 
you know, and I think that's why they haven't gone with, you know, 280 millimetres of travel on the suspension because it ruins, it ruins the road ride for the sake of just a little that bit, you know, a little less capability off road. I think they've got this balanced really well for the sort of bike I'd want. What I want from an adventure bike. I enjoyed that. It's going to take me one day and 11 hours to get home. 3,250 kilometres. <laughs> I'd love to do it. I'd love to just ride home from here now. Can you imagine? So we've got a couple of Ks on this dirt track now. So uh, I've got it in gravel mode. I've got it in A mode. Because what I've noticed actually in, in B and C, when you're on the loose stuff, they're so um, sort of dialed back and smooth that you can't even sort of kick it out, it, you know. So even though A is obviously much more aggressive um, you can do that <laughs> well you can't so much in the B and C mode I don't think it's got the off-road prowess of some of its competitors but if you only want to do this sort of terrain you know a bit of gravel you know I mean you do do you want to do more than this sort of thing on your big adventure bike do you Richie Vida does, some do, I'm not saying, you know, some do, but for me, this is perfectly adequate for what I want to do. And then you've got, you know, the, the bike is still very nicely set up for the road then still. Oh yeah, so this is gravel mode, so it does let it spin up a little bit. What, but, you know, keeping a safety net of sorts in place. Water, splash it through there. Give them something to clean tonight before the Italians turn up on this launch tomorrow. Back out with Hey! Bit of that. Ooh! Hello! Power! Put the visor down. Yeehaw! <laughs> Do watch out because it is a sheer, a sheer drop that side. Oh, this is. This is epic. That was lovely that wasn't it? Enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. I mean you could probably do that on the the non-DE version if you wanted to. You know it's a gravel lane. But with the 21 it just rides over the bumps better. It doesn't get as upset by the bumps. And because of the way they have this suspension, you know, you've got that road-based agility as well. The road model was very good, and I guess if you're only going to go on the tarmac, it's probably better. And if you're a bit of a shorter rider, it's probably better as well. But with being a little bit taller, a, little, a bigger guy, this DE just feels like it fits me beautifully. And I just feel more confident on this one. I don't know why. It doesn't change direction quite as good. Obviously with the 21-inch front wheel, it's not as wide. The rubber's not as wide as what you get on a 17, so... You know, all the all the facts say that the the, seven, the 19 inch front wheel should be better on the road based bike, but I don't know. I just get a better feel, better feedback from this one. I think it's it's really really impressive, and I never would have thought I would have liked you know a 21 inch bike more than a 19 inch. So I've obviously done something right. Maybe it's the geometry. I don't know, but. This is absolutely fantastic. That slipper clutch is also great in these conditions where you're, you're banging it down, where it could be a little bit loose. The engine's so tractable. It always was. I'm not sure if they've done anything to it to make it more tractable. It's lovely coming out of there. I mean, it doesn't have the insane power you know, of your V4S's and your, multi and your uh, KTM 1290's but it's, it's, none, it's none the worse for it it is none the worse for it, you know it is very, very good 
the brakes give you loads of feel loads of feedback and power in, in the brake setup even in the off-road mod even on the de it's also got this clever system with the the abs whereby it determines the power needed from the brake system not by detecting how much weight is on the bike but detecting how long it's taken you to slow down with the amount of brake pressure you're applying so if you're applying lots of brake pressure you know more than normal because the bike's loaded up with panniers or passengers then uh, it, it adjusts the, the feel and the power to the to the calipers so it's, it's very very sophisticated the brake system on this this is brilliant this is why i came to greece this is why i said yes <laughs> when i was invited on this launch because this is what I wanted to do and I'm so glad we've been able to do it who would have thought you could do this sort of hustling on the 21 inch V-Strom it's such an underrated bike wow <laughs> that's all right mate that's a lot of fun that's a lot of fun isn't it so there we go guys thanks very much for watching really appreciate it if you haven't seen my based DE review again another link at the top go and look at that review as well but uh, for me if I if I was putting my money down I'd pay the extra 700 quid or whatever it is and get the DE it is a very very good motorcycle see you later guys this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. I've just dropped my H2. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! Whoa. Listen to this.